So Cliff Texas sent this 18 size 7 Joule Waltham for an inspection and to evaluate its condition. The grade on this watch is a sterling. It was patented in 1883. The serial number indicates it was fabricated 125 years ago in about 1896. So the bow is quite loose. There's been a lot of these pocket watches dropped, even lost, due to loose bows. There seems to be a lot of tarnish on the case of this watch. This could be from being stored in a moist or high acid condition. You never want to store these around newspaper or in dresser drawers made from high acid wood, such as oaks or walnuts. Another mistake is to store them in a cigar box. Cigar boxes can be very high in acid and can quickly create corrosion on some metals. It's time to remove the bezel. This milled cutout slot in the case is for a movement with a lever set. Railroad watches are always lever set for safety reasons. This watch is a pendant set, so it's not what is considered a railroad grade watch. Watches in 1896 were sold as movements to be cased by the jeweler that you bought the movement from. Checking the crown and stem condition, the crown is a replacement. The original would have been nickel plated. The stem seems to be locking and pulling out correctly. The setting mechanism inside doesn't seem to be engaging to set the hands to correct time. This will need to be addressed. Using a dial protector to protect the dial, I can remove the hands without damaging the dial. I see it's missing the seconds hand. The case is stamped with the trademark name, or silver. It appears silver, but it isn't made of silver. They were made of an alloy of nickel, copper, and zinc. Sometimes known as nickel silver or German silver. The balance wheel has excellent movement, almost too good. It appears to not have any resistance from the pallet fork. I usually remove the balance first to prevent any damage to it. Now it's a matter of loosening the case screws and the movement will drop out of the case body. Next is to remove the dust cover. A lot of times the dust covers have been left off and discarded by previous watchmakers. It's always nice to see a movement with this dust cover intact. Using brass screwdrivers on these 
movements where possible prevent scratches. The pallet fork doesn't seem to be installed in its location. It's actually wedged between the escape wheel and the plate. One of the pivots is broke on the pallet fork. A broken pivot on the pallet fork would never happen in service. The two pallet jewels look to be in good shape. It had to have been broken by a previous person who had this movement apart. It will either need to be repivoted or a new shaft fabricated for it. The dial is held in by three mounting screws on the side. It's a standard porcelain dial and it has several hairline cracks. The cracks can be cleaned to lessen their appearance. the hour wheel. I can see the gold gilt has worn through to the brass in some areas. You can see the dark areas here. Now I can mount the movement in a movement holder. the motor barrel bridge plate The end shaft on this barrel arbor has two burrs on it. Almost looks like someone had a pair of pliers on it at one time. Sometime in the past, Someone didn't put the barrel cover back where it should have been.
it has some oil residue right here. That's the green color that has turned to grease due to age. The mainspring isn't broke, but will need to be removed to inspect further. It's one of the old blue steel springs. All the new ones are made from a stainless type of steel and are considered to be unbreakable. The gears seem to rotate fairly smoothly. Doesn't appear to be any damaged teeth. Time to remove the cannon pinion. Next to the setting mechanism. the two key screws now the bridge screws so we can take a closer look at the gears and pinions The balance wheel jewels are not damaged.
escape wheel and pivots look good. Fourth wheel pinion and pivots look good. Center wheel and pivots look good with a small amount of rust where the cannon pinion mounts to it. Third wheel pinion and pivots look good as well. This setting wheel seems to be a little stiff, but operates smoothly. Probably just some dried oil in it. Time to remove the balance wheel from the balance cock. The balance jewels appear to be in good shape. Balance pivots look good. There's something going on with the roller table. An excess of amount of shellac has been applied between the roller table and the balance staff. Someone tried to glue the roller table to the balance staff. The roller table should be a friction fit to the balance staff. You can see the slack chips off the roller table as if it was applied without cleaning all the oils from it. Not the way to do a proper repair. At this point I'm not sure if this is a correct balance staff or it's possible somebody fabricated a new balance staff and cut the diameter too small for the roller table to fit properly. This will need to be corrected before the watch is to operate correctly. Well, it's time to discuss my findings with the owner of this watch and see how they want to proceed from here.